<laughs> so, James Carter. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell me what your business is. My business is You Found Music. And uh, You Found Music is a platform to promote and support independent artists. Fantastic. So tell me your backstory. My backstory. So I'll probably back it up a little bit to about 2002. I uh, joined the Marine Corps. And uh, one of the things that I always loved to do is I always loved riding. I just really enjoyed riding. And um, I uh, spent about 12 years in the Marine Corps. Somewhere in there, about 2010, I uh, was stationed in Huntsville, Alabama. And I had a friend who was a staff songwriter for a publishing company in Nashville. And um, I spent some time running back and forth, hanging out with him and learning a little bit about songwriting. Um, and that's kind of where I think I picked up the bug. And uh, 2014, I got out of the Marine Corps and I moved to Nashville and I attended school at Belmont University and I was in the music business program and um, I ended up only spending a, just a little over a year in Nashville um, but um, I ended up working for a boutique record label um, it was called Row Entertainment and um, I worked for a friend of mine his name's Jimmy Ritchie and uh, he's a producer and uh, Nashville and renowned um, musician, sing, songwriter. I mean, he's he's amazing. You know, from there, um, they decided to give me a position, and uh, they made me the director of operations. And um, I would do all sorts of things, from um, compiling songs from catalogs to put together pitches for A and R executives for major record labels to um, putting together studio sessions, um, booking songwriting appointments, just really anything you could imagine under the sun, admin or operation side that needed to be done. That's a lot for a year and a half. Yes. Amazing. And, um, and it, was, it was really, really great for me. And uh, I got the opportunity to put, help put together some pretty good size events in Nashville. Um, but um, yeah, it was it was definitely a really great opportunity. I had the opportunity to sit in some rooms with some amazingly talented people, and uh, that have been around for a very long time, and uh, kind of taken me under their wing, and uh, kind of helped me along the way. And I have to contribute that to Donnie Blands for you know agreeing to sit down and write a song with me one morning and uh, for uh, Jimmy Ritchie giving me a chance um, when he didn't know me from Adam. Other I know you through your work here with, the, with the, You Found Music and mm -hmm. you've become kind of the, the guy for live streaming. So tell, tell me how that role came about. Yeah. So. It, initially what I started to do as soon as all of this happened I really wanted to um, get um, I wanted to find a way to help and uh, initially what I was doing is I was finding artists that were live streaming and uh, I put together um, some blog posts about live streaming events for artists just locally and around the world and um, just trying to promote them. Uh, if I saw live streams, I was sharing them on You Found Music. Um, and then I thought that, you know, I have a platform that has, you know, 10,000 followers and um, why couldn't I use that as a, as a platform for the artists um, and just letting them take it over and helping them and providing them a way to generate revenue or money for nonprofit organizations depending on the position they were in. And um, it, was, uh, it was tricky at first, um, but um, over you know, the two-month period, we hosted 
just a little over 100 artists. And uh, it was a lot of work. I put in about six hours a day. <laughs> well, could you offer any uh, broad technical advice for <laughs> the musician at home with their iPhone trying to uh, live stream, how they could kind of up their game and, uh, and, and evolve in this time? Yeah. So I think like the most important thing right now is is you have to create content um, and you have to keep people engaged and um, so content still king, huh? Content, content, and um, that's really important. If you're working on a song, if you can't release a record, release a single. Um, and promote it that way. I've seen plenty of artists um, taking on not releasing albums and just releasing singles um, due to the fact that they don't have the budget or the uh, capital to record it, an entire record, um, which I think is great. When you get it all done, then you can package it and release it as an EP or a record later. Um, make sure that you have decent equipment. It's okay to invest a little bit and um, make sure that you know you you sound good and your delivery is good and that you interact with the audience um, people love that read the comments um, respond to people um, it's okay to take a break and you don't have to you know slam 10 songs into a 10 minute set you know um take some time to show people who you are and let people learn about you you know um, it's that that connection um that you have with your audience i think is the thing that we're all missing um the most um from quarantine and things like that um so it's okay to talk about tough subjects, and um, it's okay to be open, and uh, it's okay to listen. Um, yeah, so one of the things that I think is really cool is, um, you know, a lot of patios are starting to be booked for live performances, and social distancing, distancing measures have been put in place, and, um, Private events, I think, are going to become more of the norm over the next year or two. Um, and the nice thing that artists have is now they can live stream these events. Mm -hmm. So if there's a guarantee for an event or there's a ticket, um, there's something that the artist is already generating. This is another way for them to showcase their music. And their audience could be anyone in the world. Um, Whereas before you might sit um, in the corner of a room in a coffee shop or a bar and three or four people are gonna listen. Um, now you have people that could potentially be tuning in from Okinawa, Japan, or Minot, North Dakota. Um, so what so. I'm hearing is, is the live stream component could probably stay indefinitely into the future. I believe so. Um, I think that uh, there's there's so much to gain from it. Um, an artist would never have um, locally, regionally touring artists would never have the opportunity to set in front of someone in Ireland or London um, or India. Um, um, it's it's pretty amazing in that sense and the way that I've seen the consumers grab a hold of this and I've seen artists gain so much following, new fans, super fans, advocates that are like die hard now um, of these artists that they discovered in live streams um, and they wouldn't have known who they were otherwise. Um, probably never would have crossed paths, even um, on a Spotify Spotify playlist. Um, 
there's just so much out there. But when you get someone um, in front of you live, um, you get to learn a lot about them. Um, and that's, that's the thing that everyone is taking in, you know? Just being genuine, being yourself, it's okay. Because, you know, everybody struggles with something, you know? So um, it's okay if you're sad or you're down or um, you're not feeling like playing a whole lot of upbeat songs, you know? Um, but I think that um, if I could, the best advice I can give is just being yourself, create, keep creating, um, and share. Fantastic, well thank you so much. Can you uh, <laughs> tell us again how to find you? Well, you can find me at youfoundmusic.com or I'm also on the social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I've also, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, that'll about do it. Reach out to me, shoot me an email at james at youfoundmusic.com if you have questions, if there's anything I can do to help anybody, I'd be willing to give you some feedback. All right, James Carter, thank you so much. <laughs>